Welcome back to TalkingToGeeks.com, the podcast show. Justin here, and we're back after, a, I don't even know how long the damn hiatus was, but hi, people. We're back. How you doing? Hey. Guys, can Actually, all... What, well, what was the last... Did, did we talk about Moon Knight when that came yeah, out? Dude. Yeah, yeah, we, 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 we talked about that. We talked about everything. So that we did something after that. Well, yeah. no, the, the, the we last time us that. four was to get us. Oh, yeah, I did that woman's episode. You did the you did girls' episode. Yeah. So for us, it's been a minute. So how's everybody doing? Uh, uh, tired. <laughs> Working, getting ready for Comic-Con. Sean had to wear his hat, so I had to wear mine, you know, just. Yeah, there's there's some bad blood between Yankees and Mets fans. I'm not going to say Justin and I are nah, at, not at, at that level, but there's one of my friends, like, I'd really like to just push him out a window with everything he said. <laughs> About the Yankees. I mean, I, I, my, my whole rant is the Yankees are still five games ahead of everybody in their division. Like, the, the, the Mets are only three games ahead of the Braves, and we know how dirty the Braves and, and Mets rivalry is. Like, so. Is that a I Southern joke? Friend, huh? But is that a Southern joke? No, no, I'm just saying. Well, <laughs> you can put it that way. I'd be, I'd be more concerned with the Mets and the Braves just because of their history than I would be concerned with the Yankees and anybody else. I mean, this man is so brazen about it. He's talking about the Baltimore Orioles, which are second to last place, how they're on a hot streak and they could send the Yankees to fourth place. I'm like, yo, really? Like, I was like, never mind. I, I just got to say this, folks. People want to know why I rock this hat. I was born in Queens, raised in Queens. They play in Queens. Trust me, if they weren't in Queens, I probably would be a Yankee fan. But wow. I wrap my burrow to the Phyllis. That's it. I'm a Yankee fan because I just, <laughs> I just gravitated towards the Yankees. I think one of my uncles gave me the hat and it went with everything. So I just stuck with it. I don't hate the Mets because I still root for the Mets when they're in there, especially if they ever play Boston. Like, listen. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. But- <laughs> It's big fuck Boston on his side, but yeah, of course, of course, in Dallas too. But we'll get to that. Oh, oh yeah, <laughs> we'll get to that. What's what's on our mind? So I want to start it off with this. It's been a lot of stuff happening, especially in the geek world, especially in the comic book world. We'll get into the acts of Zasloff after this. But Marvel has been pushing out content. Uh, quick shout shout out if anyone. Uh, quick, did anyone see Thor? Did we talk about Thor? I can't even remember if we talked about no, Love we and didn't. Thunder. What no, we haven't thoughts? talked about Thor. No, we didn't talk about Thor. Okay, so what were your thoughts on Love and Thunder? I have yet to, I, I seen, you know, did I see Thor? Yes, you didn't watch it yet? I did see Thor. I'm now, oh, I was, yes, I did well, see I Thor. Shocked. <laughs> I enjoyed it. I didn't think it was bad. I thought it was the same tone as Ragnarok. Um, Pretty much. Yeah, unfortunately. Uh, apparently, he is not coming back for number four, Taika Waititi. I mean, number five. He's not going to be directing it. So we'll have a new director, apparently. That's the latest rumor because he wasn't happy with the box office numbers. So I guess he's done. Um, I don't know what that means for Thor, what the direction of well, Thor is going to go. But... Well, they have to take a more serious note because you're about to introduce Hercules into it. And you're introducing a character that basically has gone toe-to-toe with the Green Rage Hulk, um, Thor, and everybody else who's a powerhouse in Marvel. So you can't kind of have it as a joking thing. I mean, this dude can really wreck shit. Well, I thought he, Gore was really going to wreck shit, here, too. Exactly. I mean, he's yeah, I thought butcher. Gore was supposed to, but I mean, because they put it in that same sense of Ragnarok, yeah. like, Gore was serious, but not, like, not as bad. And I think that's what pushed him to go to this level because if you're going to bring Hercules in here I mean even though Hercules has his joking jovial times when he yeah. first set up it's like yo he came in there to like to kick ass and take names so I guess they're going to go with somebody more serious because I guess phase the next couple of phases are going into a serious thing because we all know secret invasion is going to be really serious secret invasion is going to be like um agents of shield but Way, a little more serious than that. It's going to be like a little bloody. So it's going to be DC's test into that whole rated R foray. Like hey, Marvel. I mean, Marvel. I, sorry, Marvel's <laughs> rated R foray. I mean, DC goes into their rated R shit quickly, but you know, yeah. Yeah. they're going to they're gonna go into that. So I guess that's why they're going to start switching up this whole seriousness. I think a lot of the characters that we're going to see are going to have to get a little more serious because if they do it like the comic book, like, listen, they took everybody. 
Yeah. Like there was nobody, there was nobody, no heroes or villains really left. They took everybody. So yeah. Kind of a problem I have with She Hawk. <laughs> well, we'll get to that. Yeah. Your thoughts real quick on Love and Thunder. Your it thoughts was on- fun. Yeah. I mean, it was fun. Oh, wait, what No, no, you go ahead. Oh, no, yeah, like I enjoyed it. I thought it was fun, but I don't know, similar to like Doctor Strange, like I, I wanted more from it. I felt yeah. like, like I said, it's the same thing as Ragnarok. Um, I enjoy, I loved Ragnarok, but I just feel like the comedic tone, it's like, I can only handle it for so much. Like the goat joke was a little like overdone. I was like, oh my God. I forgot but all about I loved it, but then I felt like some of the tones, like Jane, like having cancer, like that should have been a little more tragic. More <laughs> serious. For the God Butcher, like he should have been like, maybe yeah. Thanos level or like something a little more like I feel like every villain after Thanos has been like mediocre like a street level villain and and reformed or is way bigger than that like it yeah like a change your heart but, I mean many- a lot of fun but I just I don't want everything to be comedic mm. So yeah, starting to sound like me. How many villains did we realistically no, no, have? No, 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 there's a no. difference. Like, we're like, we want serious. You're just like, I hate everything about Marvel because they're just funny and I don't understand why they're funny. I hate it. I hate it. Why they're funny. Right? Well, 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 I, don't, I, don't, I don't hate all of it. No, no, we'll, we'll get into the, the comedy because I got some things to say about that in, in a bit. It's something I've been saying for a while. Um, but, Jarrell, your thoughts on Thor before we hit into Miss She-Hawk? I mean, I didn't, I didn't care. You know, like I watched it and when it was over, I was just like, okay, business as usual. Same, same script, same film, same shit. I was, I was, I, I will say this. I was legitimately surprised they brought Natalie Portman back just to kill her. And I'm surprised she, I'm surprised she agreed to that. I, I actually, I think she probably said, I'll come back if you kill me. No, because- I'm not surprised because she's under contract. Everybody's under contract. So yeah. whatever yeah, they did, ask yeah. you to come back for, you got to come back for yeah, but she dead now. So I was yeah, like, maybe, I mean, <laughs> like maybe that was the condition. She was like, they were probably like, hey, you still got some time. Nah, you can't, nah, this is this yeah. is Disney. You don't change the conditions in your contract. Mm-hmm. Look at what happened at Scarlett Johansson. Like, yo, yeah. you come that's back. why. But that's why I said I'm, I'm, legit, ruin, I'm huh? like, because 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 again, like you know, with the exception of like you know Tony dying and everything, like there's really no stakes in a lot of this stuff. So when they actually committed to killing her, that was the first time in the whole film I actually was like, oh. <laughs> you know something different something different and interesting but when the guardians of the galaxy showed up i wanted to go to the bathroom i'm glad none of them really spoke that was that, that was over i i was okay with see and the, the hercules thing like the whole hercules thing with uh with zeus it's weird to me because i've seen that in wonder woman now so because you know wonder woman's supposed to be like the unofficial like daughter of zeus and then like they've told that story so now that marvel's telling that story and their zeus was a complete comedic joke and he was like all fat and shit is like it's just uh, it's like i'm not looking at when they say that zeus i'm just like no it's not I'm a, can i ask you a question Jerome? you here we go here we go never, no 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 you <laughs> you've never read a comic book have you you uh-huh. you do realize that they've explained a hundred times why there are double the characters and everything that there's an amalgamated universe where they bought both together. But the reason why it's like that is because the living tribunal and the specter are both siblings and they decided to split the universes into two. Uh, They had to explain that in MCU. Yeah. Like they, the MCU has their versions of the same gods that DC has. So Mm-hmm. One set of gods will be one way and one set of gods will be the other. Although yeah. Zeus and them are not comedic in there. I mean, none, to be honest with you, none of the comic book characters are comedic. We all know Gore is not comedic. We know every character in there that's like a threat level. I mean, even um, Loki is real fucked up in the comic book a lot of times. Like, he's not this jokey dude. I mean, Loki has done some real crazy mm-hmm. shit if you ever read acts of vengeance there's just like loki was just dirty with what he did and it almost worked so mm-hmm. like it's just the way marvel like i said this to jerrell i'm not their villains campy yeah no. like, well, i said this to justin before like it's not for us anymore like it, it got taken over by disney who do you think is we don't spend money on shit we watch it we enjoy it we move on kids they need to make money for kids which is what dc's problem is marvel makes millions of dollars on toys not you and i going out to buy toys (laughs) like 
No. No. Buying toys. But that was my point before. I've, I've made this point before. Yeah. <laughs> like so, I, I'm the one that said like Marvel caters to children. Like Spider Man will always make money because Spider Man caters to children and soccer moms. But they keep, beat, but they keep beating the dead horse. Like oh, they're comedic. Of course they are. Like I, yeah. I stopped caring about that three movies ago. Yeah. <laughs> like I, that's never in my review. But, see, but you, know what, you know, you know, like. But see, but that that that's the thing. And and I need to pose this question: If that's the case, at what point? do we get to a point where we're just like, okay, I'm tapped out because Anytime we're all, because, like no, because the thing, because the thing about it is we're all saying this, you know what I'm saying? We're all talking about this. We all express our concerns. When we, when we discuss a lot of these TV shows, more specifically the Disney plus television shows, with the exception of Falcon Winter Soldier, I don't think we've all collectively had one Disney plus show that we were like, yo, that was the shit. We, you know, majority, we hated Loki. You know, we weren't all that great on WandaVision. Like yeah, Nadia, WandaVision. Nadia torched um, poor Hawkeye. <laughs> you know, so, but but for some reason, whenever Disney says, hey, guys, we have a new show coming out on September 1st. When September 1st comes, everyone, we're all right there. You know, as, but, busy, as busy as we are, we make time for it, knowing damn well we're probably not going to like but it. But whose fault is that? Is that well, that's, that's what I'm saying. Well, no, that's, that's I did question. a whole video on that, that there's too much content now. Yeah, like, is that Disney's fault? Oh, is, that, is that our fault? Because the thing is, like, we want to watch it because we don't want to sit down and be like, oh, we didn't watch it and it actually became good. Like, I just go into the Marvel stuff thinking like, hey, depending on the show, is this going to be a serious? Like, since they already put it out there, I already see Secret Invasion is going to be a serious show. It's not going to be jokey. It's not going to be anything else. It's going to be dead serious. If I watch when I saw She Hulk, I was like, "Oh, it's going to be like the comic book. There's going to be jokes. There's going to be everything in there." They say I expected Falcon and Winter Soldier to be more comedic, but because they took on like the Black Captain America story, I knew it would be serious. Loki, I was half and half on it. WandaVision, I, after reading the comic book, I'm not shocked that by how Wanda acts, and I don't know why everybody else is shocked. Wanda's either been a villain or antihero. That's well, just her. Wanda's, Wanda's been the best villain post Thanos. I, I don't disagree with that. Like, she's just either been a villain or an anti-hero. Like, there's nothing, like, I, the only the only thing worse than that is, like, them killing off her brother. Like, if you ever read um, the, uh, what do you call it, the Ultimate Universe Ultimatum, I mean, they caused their own father to kill half the world by mm -hmm. pretending they were dead. Mm -hmm. Like, that's some real dirty shit for two kids to do to their parents just to prove a point. So I'm like, I'm not shocked by what they do, but I mean, yes, we all agree. Marvel gets very jokey at times. Sometimes you're like, yo, really, bro? You had to slip that joke in there. Huh? You, you had nothing else to do in this episode, but I kind of expect it. Kids like stupid, you know, fart jokes every every 10 seconds. But then, but then kids like twerking too. Uh, yeah. We, we, Please don't. Please um, don't. Oh, I'm, I'm <laughs> like, have to talk about that in the past post credit scene. We're please. gonna get into She Hulk right now. Okay. Um, I'll I'll go first. <laughs> I like the show. I just feel like it's rushed. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think it needs to be longer. Definitely needs to be longer. I'm three episodes in. I still do not know what direction they're going. I have no idea who this villain is going to be. I, I have my theories. I think it's gonna be the guy. From the Incredible Hulk movie, you know the guy who ended up who ended up laid up in a um the hospital at the end. I think he's probably the one behind everything. Dude, they already showed him. That was the um that was abomination. No, not abomination. The other guy. The what, laid up in the hospital. It was the doctor. The doctor guy. Oh, you think yeah. he's bring be uh the brain? I forgot. Yeah, I think he's gonna, yeah. I'm, I'm thinking he's gonna be the villain of this because I'm trying to figure it out because I'm watching. Does the show episodes. even have a villain? Huh? I still don't, I, I, I still don't yeah, know she has Titania, but right. they made her an influencer, which I was like, uh, okay. Um, who's that? Titan. Do you know the girl from the first episode when she burst into the courtroom? Yeah. Oh, so she's she's actually that's, supposed. That's to do one it. of her major villains. Yeah, she's, she's actually like, supposed to do something. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I thought <laughs> until they made her an influencer, I was like, I don't know where they, where they're going with that. But I was like, oh, uh, okay. Um, I just, I just feel like. 30 minutes is too short for a show like this, especially when you have so much ground to cover. It's a new, uh, they rushed her origin story. Like, mm -hmm. like boom, 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 
point A, point B, boom. Okay, she she Hulk now. I'm like, yeah, yeah. It's like okay, I get it. You only have a limited of time, eight episodes, I believe, and you're making eight episodes thirty minutes. This which, is getting eight. Yeah, I think it's eight. Um, because it's and I think they listen to us though. <laughs> I mean, at least their was getting what twenty four or something like that, or, or something like that. Their devil's getting eighteen. Eighteen. So I'm watching this and I'm like. I'm enjoying it. It has the same feel of the comic books. Jokes are kind of flat for me, but I'm like, where are we going with this? Because, and I'm also thinking, you know, I'm trying to remember what I always say on the show is it's just a chapter. It's just a chapter. But even with this particular one, I'm like, how's this tying to Kane and the overall narrative of what they're going to leading to? I don't see it right now. I'm seeing this mostly as a standalone and I'm still not getting it three episodes in. I'm like, I think the Megan Mastallion episode felt like a damn freaking filler minus or as a B story. I think that could have been completely cut out and we could have focused yep. more on abomination. Yeah. Or you could have did a better B story of answering where the fuck is Bruce going? And bigger question is how the hell does he get cell phone reception in space? <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm going to have to stop you for a second. Justin, go take a time out in the corner. We're talking about the most advanced. Oh God. People in the world. <laughs> And you're asking how they get cell phone reception. Tony, Tony could do anything. Thank you, <laughs> thank you, Nadia. Like you're 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 really gonna ask that question? Yeah, I'm really gonna ask that question because he looked like he got basic Sprint service. You really you really ask that question? They they ask. There's another. There's an alien race taking him somewhere, and and you're worried about Earthling <laughs> cell phone reception? Yeah, because Jennifer looked somewhere. like she got a normal phone. <laughs> Me. <laughs> Go, I actually thought what the same plan thing. she got. I don't want that. Hopefully, shit. I gotta go sit in the corner. Like, there's a kid somewhere looking at you, going, "What?" Like, <laughs> well, you tell yeah. that kid when he pays for Disney Plus, he can say something. <laughs> 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 no, but all, all, all jokes aside, I just feel like it's a good show. I just feel like it's, there's a lot of pieces that are rushed. Some things could have been cut, especially in episode three. I, I think the whole. I, I guess that they want maybe they're establishing this. Um, I forgot the homeboy, the guy's name, the lawyer guy, Adrian Chase from Arrow. Yeah, him. Maybe they're establishing him as some type of antagonist. That's why we're getting more, so much time with him. But I really, I'm trying to figure out what direction they're going with the show because right now I'm just seeing it like, okay, episode one you establish her, episode two is her getting more comfortable, episode three the abomination part was good, but the whole B story of this guy yeah. and this as guardian. Uh, girl imitating Megan and Stallion's like, was this needed? What was this for? You could have focused on something else. I would have liked to see Titania, who is actually something in the lore that's supposed to be in the show. We could have gave her those 10 minutes to establish her a little bit more screen time for her. But then again, keep in mind, we're not all the way, we're not, the series is not done yet. So maybe they're going to do that. But I like it. I just want it to be longer and a little bit more characterization and a little bit more focus on story because right now I have absolutely no idea where they're going with this. That's it. And ease in in the in the ending credit scene for me was cringe as hell. I'm sorry. <laughs> that shit was just cringe as fuck. I'm sorry. That I looked at that I was just like right, really. Go ahead, Nadia, because I know I know you got a lot. I'm to like, say. Ah. So I'm like, I am actually liking it. And I enjoy talk the most ish. <laughs> but, <laughs> I am actually loving it. I think it does exactly what it's meant to. It's a sitcom. So I think they are knocking it out the park with the comedic aspect. Um, everybody's busy talking about her twerking. But the moment that stood out for me was when the news reporter make, made a joke about her being um, uh, taken out by the mob because that's her real origin. Oh, just story, yep. So I thought that was hilarious. That had me cracking up. I do agree um, with Justin though that they did rush her origin a little bit. I didn't mind that they changed it to a car accident, but it did feel a little rushed. Like, oh, boom, boom, I got powers. And then like, look at me. Yeah, um, I know how to use them and I don't need training and I'm just going to go back to work. Well, she did have training. It was just she the, did the have training. training. Yeah, and then training was just... This is my argument with that up. though. Like, People are saying like, oh, she's Hulk explaining to Hulk. But at the same time, <laughs> uh, she's different from him because she's still Jennifer. So the Hulk loses his mind when he becomes the Hulk. He's not Bruce anymore, but she mm -hmm. still retains her mind. So to her defense, 
she still wants to be true to herself. So I respect that. So I, I saw both point of views. Like she, if she didn't get any training, then I would be like, girl, like calm down. But <laughs> she did get training. So I do agree that like, yes, she's right to tell him like, I don't want to be a superhero. I want to do my own thing. Like she still is retaining her um, personality. Um, what else was I going to say? But yeah, I love the comedic aspect and it was just a, an end scene. So it didn't bother me, the stallion thing as much as, and I also don't think it's such a huge deal. Like on both ends, it's like calm down. It was fun. Like relax. I, I, I thought it was fun. CGI ass was just cringe. <laughs> <laughs> but, I um, will say that. Like they, they could have did a better job. Like, like if you do it, do it right. <laughs> it's better than what they first showed us. That's true. <laughs> um, what else I was gonna say? Uh abomination. I mean, this goes back to the whole changes with Disney, like they made him very like um, cartoonish looking. I would have preferred like the old school original. What What is it, Sony? The one from- um, Universal. Edward Norton. Universal. Yeah, Edward Norton. like that looked way better. Um, yeah. But that's not on She-Hulk, that's on MCU in general, because this is what we saw in Shang-Chi. But um, what else? Uh, Wong was hilarious. I love that shit. He's like, I'm out, later. <laughs> like, I, I love seeing him in it. I thought he was awesome. And then, um, what else? I think, oh yeah, like, uh, so basically like uh, John Byrne was kind of part of um, Jennifer's like uh, in the comics, like making fun of her situation. So I'm enjoying it. I, I think it's it's hilarious. And like, it's, I feel like it, it's respectful to the comics. Like it's yeah. making fun of itself. It has the same feel as the comics. If you read She-Hulk, it has that yeah. same vibe, which I think is good, but I just feel like it needs to be a little bit longer because this, uh, I think they haven't established a lot or like by half an hour, especially if you're trying to go to point A, point B, point C. Like, like I said before, the origin story, episode one, I think should have been at least an hour. I that think was, it was what, 40, like at least yeah. what, 34 uh, minutes or something? She, you said yeah. that in the review. Yeah. She like breaks the fourth wall in the comics and like yeah. goes to like different pages. So that was pretty cool. Um, but yeah, I, I guess in like what you're uh, to what you're saying, like I'm wondering story wise how it's gonna progress. Yeah. The only thing I'm saying is if Daredevil twerks, so then it's gonna be a problem. Yep. You better be serious as hell. Well, <laughs> well, we'll get into that because from what people were saying, it's like, oh, the writers are saying, oh, this is gonna be a Daredevil. You haven't seen a very fun daredevil and i'm just like you know people getting worried like oh my <laughs> god he's gonna daredevil. start quipping it was just like it's I, not I gonna be like that yeah i don't want a fun daredevil i want daredevil smacking the hell out of somebody and then going like yo my he life somebody to a bloody pulp yeah like well, if he's doing one-liners and stuff then hey you already know if, if say for instance spider-man shows up in it i can mm. understand a comedic part of it but there but what made the netflix show so great was that you felt the pain every time, you know, he had to do something or, yeah. you know, even when he was made a joke, it was kind of serious. Like, yeah. was just, hey, bro. <laughs> like yeah. you know, take a day. <laughs> yeah, it was it was funny because he was being dead serious. He wasn't trying to be funny. <laughs> oh, but I mean, that's what it is. But, but. I just want to say this, too, because that's going to be the next topic. Uh, I just want to address the training thing because people are just like, oh, she picked up everything right away. I get I get that argument as well. But at the same time, they have only so much. You can't have her there for like three or four episodes training to show you that she's got it down. Yeah, back, but it could have been know? better. Than that. I been mean, better. the training could have been better. I get it. <laughs> it could have been better. It, it could have been done. But like I said, time constraints and I, there's so much they have to cover. I think there's like there's a lot of things when it comes to characterization they could have done a little bit better. But I don't call. I don't think she's a Mary Sue. Things I've been seeing from people like, <laughs> "Oh my gosh, she's picking things up so quickly." And I'm like, "Where are you getting this from?" Like, she's not a Mary Sue. It's just you know, she gotta, they gotta, keep, gotta keep the story going. You know, but at least they showed her There's learning how to be a Hulk a little bit. Yeah, she picked it up quicker than I wanted her to. At least would have did at least the whole entire episode. But you know, just want to address that. But I'm gonna pass the ball to either. Jarrell, uh, Sean, I could go to Jarrell. Like, yeah, I could talk. Let, let the hate talk. flow through you. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, surprisingly, when I saw their panel at Comic Con, San Diego Comic Con, and when the main actress, when she got on stage, and she was like, "Oh my God, everybody, this is going to be a great comedy," 
the moment she said that i actually I stopped, died no i actually stopped being angry because uh -huh. it was almost like there is it's, it's like the moment she said that i had to look at myself and say if you review this show that's on you now because she told you what's going to happen <laughs> and because there was nothing else going on at the time and, and everybody kept hitting me up saying that i should review it i reviewed it but the shocking thing is the she's the one thing about the show that i don't hate like i actually because I, I i agree with you like i said in my review that it was rushed as all hell but i don't have a problem with her i actually liked the story when she was doing the whole court thing when she was trying to get him out of you know trying to get him out of prison and then you know the argument that she used but like you said it's everything else around that that's annoying me like i hated everything with bruce banner because now all of a sudden he said in the he said in avengers endgame that he he put the man and the monster together and then in the opening scene he's bruce banner again now he got some random wristwatch nobody explained the wristwatch like the they, station. Did. they did explain it yeah, yeah he's just did. like yo I just, he said i built this watch okay what, did, did you <laughs> just sit down and pull out a diagram and show no, you but they made but but the thing him? is he gave this whole speech about how he had to put the man and the muscle together and then he's bruce banner when we see him like you're expecting him to be you know to be smart hulk then but you know smart hulk in endgame let him finish. Yeah, and they never and they never explained that either. They like did in, in, they in did explain no, it. No, in, 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 no, in, in, in Infinity War, the last time we saw him in Infinity War, he, he wanted the Hulk to come out because they were blowing up Wakanda. The Hulk told him no, and then Bruce said, hey, buddy, we got to figure this thing out. And then in the next movie, he's just smart Hulk. And he sat down in the, in, in the diner and he said, it took me a while to sit down during this time that everybody was gone. See, but I would like to but see, but I would like to have seen that. You know, but, like, but like you're, you're, like, a film, you're a filmmaker yourself. Do you have time and money to sit down and go through an entire something you but would that's, do, but, that's, but that's but that's but that's important. Like like but, taking but, but, ten, like taking 10 minutes for proper storytelling. That's important. You know what's not important? Having Megan the Stallion twerk at the end of the episode. Okay, that's not that's, that's not important. That, that's two different things we're talking about here. Like we're glossing how over many, important stuff many, to rush through the storyline. How many books have been made into movies? And everybody here has has a favorite book that's been made popcorn. into a movie, and they and they go past something that was like four chapters in a book, and they dwindle it down to fifteen minutes of story because they don't have the time, money, and everything else to make something that was four chapters into an entire five or maybe forty five minute scene to explain. So you yeah, gloss over it. Okay, but that goes out. That goes out the window when you see the stuff that they did choose to spend money on. But the stuff they choose to spend because we're not. I, I'll, I'll explain that in my own rant. But we're not in the same time. How many? What do they tell us about YouTube? You cannot do a 20, 30 minute show because people lose interest quickly. So what do you think? Kids have like ADHD with everything. So if you go into a long rant about what they do people are like oh i don't give a shit i'm done with it so they do but but, okay but that but that's what i but that's what i said about spider-man i said they i said they they dumbed down and came up with a, a bullshit storyline because people don't care about the story they just want to see characters fight and toby show up and blah 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 but, yeah, but yeah, yeah, no way home's awesome yeah that, but, and that, that's another thing oh, no. they don't, <laughs> that's, that's what that was my very exact point to justin when we were talking about it it's not really made for us right now because no it's not our error is this. So it kind of makes our points null and void because we know kids are going to, like, why was Megan Thee Stallion in the episode? She was in the, like me. <laughs> like, I was trying, like, me and she wasn't even, she wasn't even in the, she was in the episode for less than a minute. Hold she on. had one, she had one scene in court where she raised her ghetto ass hand and then she was in the oh. end credits. <laughs> scene. And like, but, but see, but, but no, but the, but the prop, like, you don't, like, you don't understand how many people hit me up but instead, don't, but let me, told let me, me ask that you a question. Me let me let me ask you that question. How many of those people are over 30? Four of them. Okay. All those people who are over 30, why don't they like Megan Asai? No, they do like her. That's why they said, Oh, I want to hear your thoughts on her showing up. Okay. So my whole thing, so my whole thing is when people were telling me this, I thought she was actually going to be a significant part of the episode. Well, so I'm sitting, I'm watching it, and then when I saw her contribution, my first thought was, Y'all paid, y'all paid her for that. Yeah, but that, that's on her. But the thing is, like, most people don't care as long as their favorite person is in the episode. Hold on. Yeah. Method Man, hold on. Method Man was in Luke Cage for about 
15 minutes. And his Method Man is an actor, though. Yeah, no, no, that's what I'm saying. Like, Method Man was in the show for 15 minutes. But that means... Hold on, hold on. Hey, Method Man, sense, hold on, hold on. Method Man was in the barbershop. Method uh-huh. Man switched sweaters with him. Method Man said a couple of things to the cops. That was it. Megan Thee Stallion was not going to be in that episode giving Oscar-winning dialogue for anything <laughs> else. It to be a cameo. Yeah, exactly. It's a cameo. And she says it in the beginning of the episode, like, how many cameos are we possibly... Which I think is a funny joke. How many cameos are we going to possibly have in this show? The, the and this is supposed to be my show, so Megan Thee Stallion being in there. First of all, let's put something in perspective. That episode was filmed a year when her song "Body" was the number one song in the nation. Like never, heard, never heard it. So exactly, you never. But it was the number one song when they were filming it, which is why her new song is not in the episode, and it's her old song because when they filmed it, that was the most popular song, and still. People are vibing. They started bringing it back for TikTok and everything else. So my thing is, again, it did its job. It pulled a bunch of people together to watch the episode to get it. There are probably people who will not watch She Hulk, but Megan Thee Stallion was in it, so they pulled a bunch of viewers on it. That's it's about money. Nobody. It's targeting a demographic. Thank it's you. New, Nobody it's gives new. a shit. So what as we, much as I, and I'm past it tonight as well. As much as I absolutely hate it. This has been done since the end of freaking time. You, Jarrell, know way you should know. In a prime example of this is when WWE used to have the celebrity hosts on Raw, and as cringy as fuck as that shit was, it uh-huh. brought in viewers. It's the same concept they're doing here. They bring in the hottest person. The person is big. It brings in Ashanti and Resident Evil, Vitamin C, Dracula. They they say, but she did something though. Like this was a waste of a spot. I don't think think it was a waste of a spot. I think it's a cameo. I don't know why it's such a big conversation. Yeah, Yeah, it's a cameo. That's it. As much as I like it, I know the reason. No, I only, I only, I only brought it up because Sean was like, "Oh, the studio has to choose what they spend their money on." I'm like, well, they spent money for that. Like that, that, like that was my they, they, so they got money. their money back so, two times over for so, because, so we're sacrificing storytelling for you know for yes, a because month. she's a draw. That's yeah, exactly why. Oh, hold on, hold on. Can I can I can oh, I be God. honest with something? Like this is I know you personally, Jarrell, so I'm not gonna say this. Do you know right now if a bunch of women watch this episode with you saying that? Oh, he's just misogynistic. He doesn't care that a woman wants to do this. And that's why I'm like, I don't care that making a sound you. I agree with everybody who says it from TikTok to Instagram, everything. Why are we always, why are we focusing on the last three minutes of an episode that was an in, that was basically an in, because it didn't take money out of our pockets. It didn't do anything. It didn't even take time out. When I saw it, I laughed and then it ended. Yep, that was, was it. Like, and I was just like, oh shit. So they had She Hulk. talked about because shit was cringy as fuck to me. And, and, then for me <laughs> and for me, all it did was spark. 20,000 memes on every piece of social media <laughs> about She-Hulk twerk- twerking, which I think is just funny. I think it, it speaks to the generation that's out there. Like, it's just what it is. It, it didn't take anything away from me on the episode. It didn't bother me that the episode had it at the end. It's it's not a waste of money because it did its job. Nothing is a waste of money. That's If that's the case in the WWE, wasted its money. Marvel well, they do all the time. Yeah, Marvel's, <laughs> Marvel's <laughs> wasted its money when it does that. these cameos. Every show in America, show, movies, they all waste their money because these actors don't get paid like, oh, here's a good $10,000. Some of these actors get like, $500,000 to show up for some of these short cameos. But what it does is it gives advertising, it brings viewers to it. That's all they care about. Whatever eyes are going to be on it, because you take somebody like, oh, I don't ever watch Marvel shit, but you take some of these hood people, yo, Megan Thee Stallion's on it. Oh, I'm watching this episode. <laughs> like yeah, I- that's, that's, that's all it's there for. If these people weren't a draw, they wouldn't even be on there. And I'll just to piggyback off it, I'll just say this because. Uh, I wanna don't want to run too too long on this. You have to understand too, and and Gerard, I I understand everybody's point, and I get it from the business standpoint why this shit happens, and I want com- comic people to realize this too. People who might be upset with this shit, and like Sean made is is for kids. He has a point there as well. 
target audience for any show is never going to be your hardcore audience. Your target audience is always going to be the casual viewer. It's always going to be the casual viewer, whether that's wrestling. You can see it in gaming now. The target audience is casual. game. The, the way they're making games now is not for the hardcore gamer. It's for the casual person who's going to play the game. These are the people that invest. These are the people that put in the most money, some might argue. But the casual audience is what they're always going to target. And they're going to use whoever they can to bring in eyes. I might, I might not like it. Like I said, I'm not a huge fan of the cameo. I thought it was a waste. But a lot of people enjoyed it. And it got eyes on a product. Disney did its job. Do I think the twerking was pointless? Yeah, it's a tw- yeah, that's a whole different conversation of me and how I feel about twerking in another general. That's another <laughs> reason why I didn't like it. Because I think it's just continuing that black woman stereotype shit that constantly happened. That's a different story. Um, But yeah, it's always going to be the casual audience. So yes, you're going to go into a Marvel product. You're going to a DC product. You might get a little things that you are aware of and they change a lot of things up. That's you can say right here now for the Lord of the Rings right now, the biggest concern and biggest outrage about the Lord of the Rings is that we got some black elves and, <laughs> and, and we got some black elves. We got, uh, I think, one of the characters they changed. They made them gay now. So that's a whole big outrage people are going crazy about, too. But you got to understand, as much as I used to complain about it, from a business standpoint, I get it. They're trying to bring in new demographics. These are the people now, the the social media crowd. Yeah, I'm going I'm to pass the baton to you in a second. <laughs> that social media crowd, as much as I don't think they really do watch shit, because not to, not to jump on CW, but as much people were championing for Batwoman to be renewed online and all these petitions that they were signing, these people were not showing up to watch the fucking show. Yep. And this is... And, 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 and could be several comics. <laughs> exactly. So they're looking at the casuals. Who's big? Megan Stallion. Hell, if this shit got bigger, you don't think I'm going to like, yo, you think we could get Cardi B? Yep. She brings in views. <laughs> the, cra- the crazy shit is she's going to be in the new Fast and the Furious as a long as a bigger character. Yeah, in the in the I movie, mean, she might not be able to act, but hell no, she, I well, that, make, well, that I makes sense for the it. Fast and the Furious. Yeah, Fast and Furious is not. Yeah, it doesn't matter. <laughs> That's actually perfect point. for them. I literally yeah. just posted a, a a TikTok I saw about that where this guy was like, name hmm. a random uh, rapper, name a random. Uh, has been name a random like a whole bunch yeah, of. I, I know what you're talking about. I saw that I and they made that entire it. Fast and the Furious movie with it. Right? <laughs> because I was like, I joked about that for years. Literally, it's like pull it out of a hat. Yeah. Yep. I mean, but that's just the way the the, the industry is going. Like, I might not like it, but that's how it is. It's always going to be who's hot. Like Bad Bunny was in um Bullet Train. Can Bad Bunny act? I didn't mind him. No, he was, no, he was he good. Was he's bad. good, but I didn't just, mind I'm just, I'm just, I'm just using. But his it. own movie—that's a different story. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm using this as an example. Bad Bunny, you watch wrestling. Bad Bunny was at WrestleMania doing that matchup. We all grown is like, why is this musician taking a spot from somebody who's on the roster who's been busting a ass? He brought in a whole Hispanic demographic to the WWE. They actually That's made more viewers and more well, money. Plus, but, see, but plus, he took it serious too. It's not like he just came in to yeah. do like a joke skit. He actually did a good job. Well, initially, well, let me ask you a question: Do you think who's been sitting in the back for years, busting their ass, hurting their back, hurting their legs, doing everything else, leading, jobbing for people, want you to tell them, "Oh, but he he also took it seriously." They've been taking it seriously for 10, 15 years. They didn't deserve that spot. No, of course they did, but there's a reason why they haven't been on TV up to that point. But see, now you're a hypocrite because you said that's not being that's not being you're talking about wrestling. No, 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 no. it's different. different. Sitting in catering all year in wrestling, you've been sitting in catering for a reason. No, 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 money coming in one night's not going to change the fact that you spent and making a sound you're coming in for one episode doesn't do anything. And it was a tag match. (laughs) <laughs> you know, they, like it was a tag. That's my point. You're, so, you're, you're it wasn't a water. It wasn't a. It wasn't here's a, my thing. Can, can I finish my actual oh, She-Hulk? Wait, point? I gotta, I gotta here's the thing. Can I finish my She-Hulk point? Oh, hold on, hold on. Here's the thing that makes it hypocritical. You will die on a. You'll die on a hill for Bad Bunny to be up there, and this. Even die on a hill. <laughs> no, but that's what I'm saying. You're making points for that, but you're dying on a hill for that, and there's somebody in the back going, 
this motherfucker took my spot and I've been busting my ass for years for doing this. That's okay. But Megan Thee Stallion being in there for two it's minutes at, a- the end of, at the end of an episode, which didn't hurt anybody. It didn't take any money from another actor or do anything. My sanity else. Scene, she hooked twerk. It's yeah. hold on, hold on. For, first that of all, it's, that's the wrong thing. For, first of all, it's weird. not okay. It's not okay. And if that wrestler had if that wrestler expressed that concern, they'd have a legitimate gripe. But, 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 but all I'm, but all I'm saying, but I'm, right? what I'm saying is, it's worse if that person took your spot and made a complete joke out of your craft versus you bringing somebody oh. in who actually did a good job. I, I'm my point, my point, hold on, 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 my point with Megan the Stallion I didn't care either way because I said, I don't, I don't, even, listen. Like that. I don't, I don't even listen <laughs> to the woman. I don't even listen to the woman's music. My, 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 point, my point was people that watch my YouTube channel, they were asking me what I thought about the episode. They were, but the way they were asking, it made it seem like she actually did something significant. So when I finally watched the episode and I saw what she actually did, I was just like, y'all were making a big deal over that. She didn't do anything. <laughs> episode was already spoiled though because people yeah, are so she, annoying like before it even like dropped there's already like memes of her well they released yeah. this yeah, I, just thought, I just thought i just thought her role was gonna like i didn't care that she was in the episode i just thought her role was gonna be more significant she was literally like her name got mentioned more than she was in the show yeah I agree. <laughs> but, all the hype. Yeah, yeah but how many shows do they do that with that's my point about it how yeah. many shows do they always say oh this person is going to be in it next episode and the person gets an episode and you're like oh shit they were yeah, like that was it like <laughs> That was but, 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 but that's, but that's the public thing. Like the public, the public makes more take, of a big deal out of that. Then, yeah, but it doesn't it take away from it. And and to its credit, Marvel had more viewers on She Hulk because she was in it. The same way the WWE benefited from Bad Bunny being in that, whether he was good or not. I think personally, it was bullshit for him to be in there. But that's just my opinion. Like, but it still bought the same amount of viewers that She Hulk did. So my point was, even when somebody asked me about it, I was like, well. I don't really watch wrestling like that, so I feel bad for somebody who didn't get it. But it did its job because they WWE got their money. They got more by Stallion being in it. Yeah, all I said was, well, at least he took it seriously. Yeah. At the end, at, at the at the end of the day, it's more like I said before because we got to move on. Yeah, yeah, can, can I make can I make can I make my two points that I was trying to make this two whole time? Two points, and we got to move on. Go this whole time, play. Yo, bro, Regard- out of my my thought. Um, Re- re- regarding okay. why she um doesn't have an alter ego hulk and i and i i honestly wish they would have said this because i thought it was a it was a simple layup w- the blood that got into her system it wasn't incredible hulk blood it was smart hulk blood like the transition of him combining the man and the monster where he's in control of the monster that blood's already in his system so that's the blood that got into his system which is why she's in control of herself and why she doesn't have an alter ego I don't know why they didn't say that, but I thought it was pretty. I thought I thought that was an obvious thing. The Sorcerer Supreme cameo was extremely disappointing, and I'm gonna tell you why. Because if his whole reason is, oh, because I'm the Sorcerer Supreme, I just needed a challenge to prove my skill. I'm like, bro, you could have pulled anyone from the Marvel Cinematic Universe for you to randomly break into prison and specifically pull the Abomination out of prison when you literally could have gotten anybody. And you're the Sorcerer Supreme. You could have opened a portal and fought anybody you wanted you pulled him out of prison why i just thought that i i i hope i hope him doing that has a significance later on down the line because probably with thunderbolts that was the dumbest reason of all time yeah it's gonna all tie into thunderbolts that's probably why they're bringing him in for the three people to read comic books because i saw that a mile away (laughs) most likely thunderbolts will be addressing it I mean, like I said, as much as I hate it, it it's it's everything's yeah. chapters. You gotta wait. But, but again, but again, but I will say, I I will say this. She's the only thing of what she's doing specifically. I actually don't mind. Like I don't hate it. You know, it kind of reminds me of Peacemaker because Peacemaker so Peacemaker was a dumbass and he was a joke. But I was I was prepared for that because he was a joke in Suicide Squad. They told me this was going to be a comedy. I'm prepared for it to be a comedy. But like you said, Justin, everything outside of her, I don't like. <laughs> like that's that's my whole problem with the show. She's actually fine. Like I don't hate her as a character. <laughs> okay, I'm I'm only gonna give a two minute rant about it. She Hulk is fine. It's not even <laughs> put it out. It's what it is. I didn't expect She Hulk to be this. Like my this is my only thing about Marvel. Whenever I watch a Disney Plus show, I don't expect it to be serious because I expect it to be what it is. I've said this to Justin when we did our review of She Hulk. It's not made for us anymore. This is not 19. My era, I will have to say, is 1990 to probably 2010. 
It's not 1990 to 2010 anymore because nothing is what it is. I mean, we got, for in my opinion, the best X-Men movie that ever came out was X2. After that, we got shitty remakes of X2, Fantastic Four, everything X- else. Do X2 you know and Days of Future Pass. Yeah, true. Yeah. Okay, so those are the two movies. You know why? Because we got a bunch of movies that took itself too seriously, didn't stick to the comic book material, and was written by people who have this thing where they over-explained everything instead of going. You can't. You don't need to over-explain things to comic book fans because we kind of get it. And it's no. If you went through origin stories of everything, it would take too long. Um, my thing with the whole thing is, yeah, they're going to be stupid things in there, like the Megan Thee Stallion thing was fine to address the thing with what Jarrell said with the She-Hulk thing, with the Asgardian thing, you also have to realize that it's also going into Thunderbolt, where the Thunderbolts were tied into Norman. Well, is it not Norman, but what's his son's name? Um, Harry. Harry Osborne, taking over the uh, Iron Patriot uh, suit and forming the Thunderbolt, and his first act was to destroy Asgard on Earth. Well, so, no, Norman did that. that. Was it no? It was happy. Yeah, no, it was Norm, Norman, it was Norman. Norman was Norman was Iron Patriot. He's All right, I'll, I'll look it up. Okay, so if it's Norman, uh, I swear it was Harry. All right, so if Norman, Norman, Norman took over the Iron Patriot suit. He had some kind of beef with Asgard. He wanted, remember then he takes over Shield and he, he turns Shield into yeah. Hammer. Yeah, he goes in. He destroy. He wants to destroy Asgard. So I see why as the Asgardian thing was in there. Also, that ties into She Hulk. They're doing the whole court thing. With it coming in, like, and that kind of like brings up that the Asgardians are being annoying. They're doing shit while they're on Earth, and they're not sticking to their own. See, their and own actually, and I thought that made that made perfect sense because if Asgard is on Earth, why would they not spill out into regular society? Yeah, and that's and that's the problem. That made, per- that made perfect sense. And that's the problem <laughs> with the Thunderbolts. Like the people don't like it, so they use the Thunderbolts to kind of like start a war, which also leads into Secret Invasion because. It's, it's a whole big thing. I see where they're going with it. I doubt if they're going to follow the same comic book source and material. I just think She-Hulk is what it is. Sometimes I think um, what has spelled out on the internet is a big conversation about, and this is not on you, Jarrell, so I don't mean to make it sound, I want to say this. <laughs> a lot of people will call him like, oh my God, he's so terrible. He's this, he hates, no, Jarrell doesn't hate women. He doesn't have that. He's had his own opinion about Marvel stuff forever. So this is not anything new. And our argument is not new. It's not like me yeah, and Jamal. Yeah, yeah. We don't walk out in the street and battle at 12 noon. <laughs> <laughs> we don't agree on Marvel. We, we've never agreed on Marvel in DC. But the thing is, like, there is a big um, thing going around. That, and it's true. Men have been very misogynistic when it comes to She-Hulk. If this had been a male-oriented show, nobody would question the rapper being in it. Nobody would question this. I would. Because, <laughs> yeah, we have. Like, I've been on, I've had reviews with Justin where he was like, hey, why the fuck is this person in this? And it's all the it's, time. It's just our opinion. But when it came to Megan Thee Stallion, this has been like a huge argument about how She-Hulk is this, She-Hulk is that. It's a woman-led show. I don't understand how men go out there and fawn over cosplayers and do this and they over sexualize yeah. everything but you see a marvel show where they kind of do it t- tasteful one of my favorite scenes was when he when they stole the asgardian weapons and they grab her and she's like hey let me go and then she stops looks at the camera and goes wait oh i got this and then she turns into she hole and beats the shit out of him i thought that was very clever because for a second she forgot that she has the ability to take them out i think that people need to calm down and just watch the show one Watch the show for what it is. Jarrell made a great point. Hey, it, she said it was going to be comedy. Mm. The comic book is comedy. Watch it as a sitcom. As a com- I didn't even think of it until Nadia said it. Like, it's a sitcom. It is. Like, so sit Both down. Sitcom. Yeah, sit down. Watch it as a sitcom. Don't think of it as anything. We don't know what Marvel is going forward doing because they have been very inconsistent. I think we said that on a previous episode. Yeah. Marvel has been very inconsistent this phase with everything they're doing we don't know but we could be surprised at the end where they pull this all together all this crazy confusion makes it what it is she hulk is a fine show i've agreed that 30 minutes sucks it needs to be because by the time you get into it it's over and then we get a in credit cameo of her doing something um i'm shocked people don't like it our age because they're bringing back characters that we grew up with i mean uh, not Balky, but what's the name for Perfect Strangers? Yeah, yeah, yeah. La- yeah. Cousin Larry. Cousin Larry is her, her yeah, fault. Yeah. 
Yeah, we know dad. that. We know that. But other people are like, who's the old guys? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, so, I just pop. I just pop for Adrian Chase from Arrow. Yeah. So you know, like, I have, I have a question: Are uh, you guys liking this more than Miss Marvel? I think. Uh, it's I, so this is the crazy <laughs> thing. That's tough because I like I love Miss Marvel. That was they're cool. very different. And the yeah. irony is, you know me, I love my Daredevil, Punisher, Netflix, blood, gore, mm. yep. the violence, the cursing, the darkness. Um, but for me, Miss Marvel was amazing. I loved it, and it executed perfectly what it was set to do which is i'm hoping what she hulk is going to continue to do because like i said it's meant to be a sitcom it's comedic yeah. and it feels like the comic so i'm enjoying it I, but for me i miss the irony is miss marvel so far is my favorite disney plus because it was the oh, most wow. consistent aside well falcon and the winter soldier is also oh, yeah. has a place in my heart but um moon knight hawkeye loki they all had too many issues for me so the irony is miss marvel was my favorite yeah, yeah. I like I I that's like Magnalia. <laughs> it's Marvel for me, better by an inch because I'm an X Men fan. So I'm just that's just that ending reveal at the end when I heard my X Men theme. I was like, all right, you got me, you got me. Because if you if you know me, you know for me it's Spider Man and X Men when it comes to Marvel. So the minute they I heard that theme, I was like, oh, they made it a mutant instead of Inhuman. I was like. Okay, I see where you're going with this. Keeps it different. They should they should they should have led with that though instead of the magic bangle. <laughs> I mean, I mean yeah, with... that was that was a little weird for me, yeah. but I accepted it. I accepted yeah. it. I was like, all right, well, it's Marvel. I only yeah. accepted it because they did a whole backstory on her family history. Yeah. So I, and, and actually I liked the Pakistani aspect of the show. Yeah. So I was like, so because we're going all in on the history, I will accept this magical bangle. <laughs> yeah. Um, I always want to touch on something really quickly before we get into the acts of Zavold at all. Um, <laughs> Sean brought up something really, really, um, really something I wanted to touch on, which is the term I've been hearing a lot is the MCU. I've been hearing that a lot online due to She-Hulk. Of course, you have Wakanda Forever. You have Ironheart coming. You have a lot of female-led shows. And I want to address that particular vocal minority, little 1% people who are bitching, complaining, thinking that women are taking over Marvel and that all the male characters are going to die and get pushed to the wayside because all these women, female leads are coming in. One, it's not that serious. Two, <laughs> it really isn't that serious. Like, it really, it like, it's at this point. Are some things that, like, even when I was watching she hulk there were certain things in the show that made me go, really, like, can you be a little bit more subtle about yeah, your writing? Uh, like, you know, I get it. Yes, I, I understand. There's feminist overtones in there. I get it. But, yes, can they be a little bit more subtle about it? Yes. <laughs> that, that's, that's not that's not the, on the fault of the showrunner or anything that's that's the skill of a writer to make your message clear without beating it over your head to sound damn preachy like her, her like when she did her, the her the worker the yeah the cat calling um the cat calling uh speech yeah. that she did when she was talking to Bruce and yeah. she was like I know how to control my anger well so mm. many people were so upset about that and it was just like dude it's what she's going through that's her experience doesn't necessarily mean <laughs> she say I hate all men. She didn't say all men are evil. She didn't say all men are bad. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's moments in there people are like, oh, it's the MCU because of that scene in Endgame where all the women miraculously there at the same time now, on the battlefield. Didn't, didn't that signify the all-girls Avenger team, which they had a huge comic book about? Yeah, but... you know, a, a comic book head would know that, okay? But I'm talking about these people who are complaining that anytime yeah, they like see they a female like lead... Hasn't been around for 30 years. Yes, like anytime they see a female lead, it's the MCU. Anytime someone's announced, even with Thor, when they said Lady Thor's going to be there, oh my gosh, she's going to replace Thor. She died at the end. But, but she did. The, comic... <laughs> the funny thing is she did in the comic book. Yeah. But she, you know... That's what I'm saying, but it's just like at this point, everything now that's a female lead, and I'm just trying to tell these dudes, relax, chill out. You still got your Iron Man, you still got your Thor, <laughs> you still got your Captain Americas. No one's taking over shit. Like I'm, my biggest problem is you have a bunch of young kids that listen to Andrew Tate too much and just sit oh, the mid talk and, crowd, yes. and, 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 and sit down and think. I mean, like 
I, I, listen, me personally, maybe it's just me as my age. Like, you want to see women in comic books because, like, I don't need my comic books to be a sausage fest. Yeah, right. <laughs> With everything that comes in. And there are strong women in everything. There are some great female Ooh. writers. Like, I know that there, and it's not just the MCU. I know people who are bitching about the new, uh, uh, what do you call House of Dragons because the character is a strong female lead and most of the females in there are strong leads and they're complaining about how I'm like have you not read the Game of Thrones book like women are just as devious in the fucking series as men are and they're and they're just as strong so why are we bitching about that after eight seasons of Game of Thrones and then we're we're complaining about an entire prequel that's made up based around the House of Dragons. And most of the most of the dragons were ridden by women. <laughs> you know, so what what are we what are we flipping out about? Like, yo, man, take a break. Like sometimes I want to tell them, come out the basement. <laughs> I was gonna say the only time they could have this argument is Supergirl. Jarrell, you watched more than me, but I could not watch that show. Yeah, they got but real. I would say cool. that's an example where it's like, I'm a female, I can do this. And instead of her just being a badass freaking but you know but you know what's funny they have to make superman a jobber and he's like i'm gonna let um my cousin handle this because i can't better to me that's fucking stupid sorry that's <laughs> no 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 that's no the go only ahead, time that's fucking stupid. they can make that argument but otherwise if she's just a badass female then she's just a badass female yeah i mean the, the funny thing about that though people weren't ready to like burn the castle down over supergirl like I mean, a couple of things got said, but there wasn't like this anger and outrage. Like for the most part, when DC TV did their female led, like nobody complained about Sarah Lance. Nobody, you know, nobody really yeah, had a problem with that. But it wasn't as loud. Yeah, it wasn't like, like, it wasn't like, as like, loud like I mean, as I mean the same, I mean, like the same closed minded people are always gonna have something to say, but they weren't ready to like storm, well, you know, like Warner Brothers Entertainment because it's because of Supergirl. I agree. You know, and, and, you know, and, and it's funny to me because when Supergirl first came out, everybody was like, Oh, yes, yeah, a strong, powerful female. And then in the the first episode when a dude punched her in the face they were just like oh that's not okay yeah and i'm like that. well but she's but she's super girl like you know you can't you can't have it both ways like it got either backlash she, like oh she shouldn't be taking hits yeah right. you know like I oh thought that, like when they got mad when um what was it a Apo- was it apocalypse uh choked mystique oh yeah yeah <laughs> yeah and i was like why are you crying like she's yeah like, that, like, that was controversial they, they had to I take on like, the like, post it right so on a female that's, that's more um yeah, misogynistic. Like, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. They took down like, a poster for that. Superheroes don't sit down and go, "Oh, she's female. Let me go tag in another female." Yeah. yeah, I mean, another one they could complain about. And like I said, if if these people are complaining about the writing, then I get it because it's not the fact that these are female characters is how they're betray- how exactly. they're portrayed. Yeah, yeah. That's well, the issue. Yeah. That's well, the, and even Superman, Nadia. I never. Every time Superman, quote unquote, took a back seat. And was like, oh, you do it, Car. Like, he's Superman. He's a nice guy. Like, did anybody really believe him when he said, oh, you're stronger than me? Like, he didn't believe that, but he's Superman. Well, to be honest. He's a nice guy. He's a nice guy. Like, it's ladies first. To be honest, even even in the cartoon, uh, Bruce says that she absorbs sun better than Bruce. Yeah. One, because she's younger. And two, she does it. But also, to bring to the point, and I know some, we try to avoid this, but you know why a lot of times they're complaining about the Marvel female lead? If you notice, there's one demographic that's been leading a lot of things in Marvel yeah. that they've been complaining about. And I think that's really messed up. Because like you said, Supergirl came out, nobody bitched about Kara. But when it comes to our, our a lot of POCs, the mm-hmm. Marvel has been pushing. A lot of people have been complaining hard body about how they're doing it. Because like I said, Megan Thee Stallion is just a big star and I get everybody's complaint on this panel about it. But when I heard some of the things people were saying about it, like, oh, she's just a twerker. I'm like, yo, why are you hating? You, you're talking about for the first time, a rapper who's not from the streets, who's not, you know, yeah, she's doing some some, some, some ratchet shit. <laughs> but, you're, but you're also talking about a college educated woman who used all that to make herself money Whereas if she walks away from it right now, she can still go follow her her uh, major and probably make even more money because she's a big name. So for once, we don't have a, a female rapper who embodies, who, yes, is embodying sexuality, but is also intelligent, who also smart and business minded and everything else. And y'all, isn't that some of the things we've asked for 
and a lot of rappers. I mean, she's not doing the city girl shit. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, take a man for his money, twerk, twerk and do this and da-da-da. Like, yo, come on. Like, I mean, she's not playing Jennifer. Yeah, exactly. Like, you're you playing know, Jennifer, then I could understand complaining. Yeah, yeah. But you know, but just let's let's just sit down and take for a second that a lot of this is prejudice on top of misogyny on top of everything else that we're complaining about not us but people are complaining about and it is really ridiculous to uh, and on top of that a lot of people have a lot of hate for marvel for being on top which is supposed to lead into (laughs) to just this thing about your man axing the hell out of dc for no reason the axe of zavloff has been David Zavlov, folks, that is the CEO of Warner Discovery. Ever since the merger, he is now taking over. And this man's been on a rampage. I mean, just alone. It's not just DC that's affected. They just recently lost legendary pitches, who are the ones that are has the rights to Godzilla and King Kong. Uh, I forgot the other major. Oh, Doom. So and they've, done some Marvel, they've done some DC stuff, too, like some of the DC heroes, right? Yeah, Um. but DC owns everything. They just, like, you know, had license to use it, but I think DC got all that back. But yeah, he's been on a rampage. So first ones off, obviously, they sold the CW. That was that was that was one like first order of business was canceling a lot of the CW shows. As we know, Flash is getting his last season. And then the major one that had people screeching and crying to the moon in a complete state of rage was that Batgirl was canceled after filming was done. Like yeah. post-production ready to go and he canceled it because he didn't like the movie yeah, and I was he gonna say, said this, there should be a addendum to that we thought it was a test audience yes yeah, he didn't he like, didn't it. like it. Yeah, he, didn't, he like didn't like it and he said that all these dc movies dc projects and property should be major film events he's old school he's going back to that old school hollywood formula my problem with this guy is is that he doesn't realize that that formula has been dead for a while now it's been nothing but streaming good example is halloween ends is going to be premiering again on peacock and in theaters at the same time at the same day in october it's just the way the world is so he wants dc to be nothing but major events uh right now blue beetle is still safe from what they said thank god um matt reeves just signed a deal with warner brothers so the batman sequels are safe um as marilla is safe even though he's been terrorizing the Samoans in Hawaii and everything else, but the Flash is safe for some freaking reason. Uh, Aquaman got pushed back again. Um, Yeah, because they got to reshoot all the Amber Heard scenes. No, Well, no, not even that. They got to reshoot the Michael Keaton scenes with Ben Affleck. So they're getting rid of Keaton. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, The Batflack is back. Yeah, Batflack is officially back. They're getting rid of Michael Keaton. Yeah. that's not awesome. really. No, I, I really was hoping. <laughs> I wanted I both. But... I, yeah, I wanted both because I was hoping they were going to lead with Michael Keaton to do Batman Beyond and just bring back Tim Burton and they can continue and just give him his epilogue like that. But that's fantasy booking. Um, So the only one that's safe right now is Black Adam because it's The Rock and who, who are you to tell The Rock anything at this point? Um, Did they resign Henry Cavill? They apparently did. Apparently, but not, he turned not, them down. But I heard he turned them down because he might be Captain Britain or um, what's the, what's the dude's name with an H in Marvel? Hyperion, something like yeah, that. Hyperion. Hyperion. Yeah, Hyperion. That, that's the rumors that he's gonna go to Marvel because they like Warner Brothers has lost so many people at this point. Um, because their 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 goal apparently is to obviously do cheaper costs and save three billion dollars, but from what has been reported, I think by Variety is that they lost twenty billion dollars by trying to save three billion, because they're losing all the things because everybody's just like he's cutting, cutting. Everybody's like, "Yo, fuck you! I'm not gonna work with y'all no more." So you're losing actors, you're losing production studios, you're losing things, and all because you have this idea to mold. Warner Brothers the same way you did Discovery and treat it like it's Discovery, but it's two different things. Discovery, yeah, but, Discovery. but it's also taking on <laughs> issues that already existed because yeah. of um uh Walter Kamada. What's yeah, Walter Hamada really Kamada. shit the br- shit, he shit the bricks. Started the whole DC issues, yeah, and now yeah. they just they got a new guy. Um, that they, they're trying to find their Kevin Feige, and. They're not gonna find a Kevin Feige. I, 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 if they were gonna get a Kevin Feige, I would just get Bruce Tim, who did the animated series. I yep. think he is well knowledgeable. There's rumors that Greg Berlanti was in running for it. 
Uh, those are the guys, uh, for the people who don't know, that's the guy who did the Arrowverse. I would prefer Bruce Tim because if anyone knows, one, Bruce Tim writes comics. Two, if anyone knows how to do a Justice League story, how to do a Batman story, how to do a Flash story, it's this guy. He knows how to bring all those heroes together. All you got to do is emulate the same thing you did with the animated universe. Not and Obviously, configure a little bit more to live action because obviously animation and live action don't translate well. See, anime live action films for that. Um, but he's been on a rampage cutting things down. So I'm going to pass the ball first to Mr. DC Jarrell. Your thoughts on Batgirl getting canceled, the acts of Zasloff, and then we'll hit Nadia up and then Sean. Then we'll go to what we're gaming and playing or watching, then we'll wrap it up. Go ahead, Jura. I mean, it's just it's just flat out stupid. Like, you shot the damn movie. You know, even if you decide, like, even if you did, and then to say, like, oh, we want, it, we want these to be big blockbuster movie, wasn't that supposed to come on HBO Max anyway? Yeah. Like, it's, it wasn't even supposed to be a movie, um, like a movie film. Just release it on Max, let people watch. You already shot, even if you decided, you know, we're cutting all this shit, everything that you've already done, just put it out there. And it's, I, I don't think it's a Kevin Feige situation. I think they just brought in some random dude and they were like, hey, listen, we fucked this whole thing up. We need you to clean it up. And his version of, this is what his version of cleaning it up looks like. You know, it's his personal opinion. He's not listening to the fans. He doesn't know what the fans want. I don't even think he understands like half of the characters and like what the genre is about. All he knows is Batman, he, he, Superman. Yeah, he yeah, he know like he just looked at the numbers and yeah, he just based everything. All, yeah, he's a money guy, like I said before. Yeah, he, he just based, guy, he based it on that. He he cares about the shareholders. That's his yeah. he doesn't give a fuck about you fans. He wants to <laughs> please them stockholders, some shareholders. He care about money. And Batman, Wonder Woman, Superman are money. Batgirl, I'm not saying that Batgirl can't draw 700 million. She see, possibly we we, can. But we don't know that now. Yeah, well, we won't know that now. But, <laughs> you know, we, well, we well here's the thing. He he did make money because by axing Batgirl, yeah, by remember, it's, it's, coming on, it's coming on HBO Max, so it's not like it was going to make block, box office money. Yeah. Where they would make the money back. By axing Batgirl, he actually makes back the money he spent putting the movie together so he didn't spend it yeah no but they did the studio spent it yeah. so they actually get more money back as the tax write-off than they do yeah. send then sending the movie out so as a business from a business perspective he did the right thing yeah like he he because it wasn't if it because he could have taken a chance if it was going to the box office he could have rolled the dice and said hey you know what i'm gonna check to see what you know yeah uh, but because he um, because he got rid of it and is going to write it off on the taxes, he doesn't lose. You know that I think it's a big loss by not bringing it out, but he doesn't lose anything. HBO Max is not going to make money; they already got subscribers. And the fact that if you already have HBO and you're paying for it in your cable, you get it for free anyway. So he's not making any. Well, interest. we might not have HBO yeah. next yeah, year because right. he's planning to merge that with Discovery and make Discovery. The bigger brand yeah, and have like, HBO Max as a little hub in Discovery app, man, uh, like the whole because Discovery is his legacy. So and nobody's he, buying the Discovery app. And no, no one gives it. Okay, I'm not, <laughs> not, not, not trying to say not. I'm not trying to say no one gives a damn about 90 Day Fiance. Women I talk to <laughs> love that show. I'm just saying, if I had to choose between Game of Thrones or 90 Day Fiance, I'm pretty sure the most general population is going to go with Game of Thrones. I'm watching a dragon fry somebody. I don't care about your feelings. <laughs> like, like, you know, so, I mean, I'm curious to see where going to go. I was excited first when I was like, yo, this guy's going to, like, cut costs. I think he was going to cut stupid shit. Like, <laughs> no, he's just cutting everything. I'm like, yeah. dude, what are you doing? <laughs> like, I mean, I would, I would be, a fi- like, I wouldn't have a problem if, um, if Berlanti, if they put Berlanti in charge of it, because, Based on what he did with the Arrowverse, I mean, when Flash first season, years <laughs> when no, I'm saying, but when when Flash season one came out, and in that very first episode when they showed the newspaper that said Flash vanishes in crisis, he built eight years to get to yeah. that point. <laughs> and when and when crisis when when the when the six part crisis episode came out, and we had all these different heroes with Black Lightning and Batgirl and everybody. He brought it back to that one newspaper in season one of The Flash. So he can tell he can tell that long-term story. 
um, I, I, I believe in him for that, you know, but, but like you said, I also do agree with Bruce Tim because he's just been in the game longer and he had, and, and I do give Berlanti credit. He built that universe with, without having access to all the characters. Yeah. And he still made something out of it. So imagine if you give Bruce Tim access to all the characters, what he could do. But I'm not, I'm fine with either one of them. My only issue with Berlanti, sometimes he can push the uh, agenda a little too much, but the, but the base storytelling of the characters, I'm fine with. Um, at this point, once you cancel DC fandom, I'm yeah. basically like I'm I'm at the point now where I've already paid for the Gotham Knights video game in full, and I don't even have a PS5. So like, I need like, like understand that for a second. Like I gave, I bought the game in its entirety. I didn't put $5 down. I gave them all the money and I don't have a PS5. You I'm at the point now about the damn system. Are you insane? Yeah. man? Yes, I am insane because this game looks awesome. <laughs> and I'm going to find somebody with a PS5 to play it. If I don't have one by the time it comes out, I'm at the point now where the, 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 the ship, the ship is taking on water. I'll be over here. When y'all figure this out, wake me up. And because that, because, because again, as of right now, the only three um, Arrowverse shows we got left is Stargirl, The Flash last season, and season three of Superman and Lois. I'm just going to ride that train to the end. And then when they figure out what they're going to do, then I'll come back. Like when I see DC News now, I don't even read it anymore because I don't care. That's just the best. <laughs> you know, like, like, I don't, like you said, they keep pushing movies back, they keep canceling certain things. I'm just like, when you come up, thank God they actually shot season two of Peacemaker. But I'm like, when you guys come up with a plan, then let me know. All right, Nadia. Yeah, so I'm mad because like when they first announced like all these changes, I was one of the hopeful people where I was like, DC fans are annoying because they complain about everything. And I was like, nobody wanted to see Batgirl. Suddenly everybody cared about Batgirl. And I was like, nobody wanted to see that. Everyone was talking shit. Everyone was talking about shit about her looking like a bad cosplay. I was like, what are they doing? Like, how are they tying this in? Like, where's Bruce? Like, he's supposed to be a major part of her arc. And I was like, it, it just seems very like here's Batgirl without tying her into like the Batman universe because you have to have an established Batman universe and then like you have like your Jason and um all your Robins and then like your Batgirl and like I just felt like they were just making a Batgirl movie to make a Batgirl movie and my reasoning for them canceling it I was like maybe it's just so freaking bad like that's what they were saying like a lot of yeah. people were like it, it's terrible and like, I was like, maybe it's just so bad to the point where it's like actually like bad for DC because they're trying to, you know, get yeah. back on top. And then I just felt like maybe it was um, not going to tie in well to anything else. So I thought they were restructuring. And then basically like the Flash movie was supposed to be so good. Like apparently it's one of the best DC movies made. That's what they were saying. Yeah, so I time. still want to see that shit. I'm yeah. just like Ezra, like, God damn it. <laughs> like, but I still want to see it. But apparently, like, it's supposed to be like a game changer. So I'm freaking upset because in my mind, I'm like, okay, the Batman is amazing. Keep that as a separate entity, just like the Joker, like an Elseworld. Yep. DC, I thought, was on the right track. I thought this was going to be the right moves. And then I thought with the rumors of, like, Ben coming back, I was like, maybe we can somehow tie in um, Snyderverse again. And then I thought this was going to be the cleanup we needed. But now as more and more stuff comes and more axing comes, I'm just terrified. And now they're also shitting on Snyderverse again. And I'm so confused because I'm yeah. like, with yeah, they, Max, it did phenomenal. And it's yeah, apparent, yeah, yeah, apparent. Like, but this is old news, though. I mean, I don't know why they're reporting it like it was new. Yeah. The older heads at Warner Brothers did not want to release the Snyder Cut. That's yeah. documented. I don't know why that's resurfacing now. Yeah. Talking about, like, Warner Brothers Discovery. That, no, the old heads, Walter Hamana and I thought he was a fan them. of it, and I thought they were yeah. trying to bring yeah. it back. And I get super annoyed with people because Gal Gadot would not have a career without Zack Snyder. Mm -hmm. She would not have a career without Zack Snyder. What? He made Wonder Woman 1, not What's, Patty. I'm sorry, it wasn't just Patty Jenkins. But she was in Fast and Furious 5. She, she came back because of him. She has a career because of him. Yeah, yeah. And everybody loves some gal. Well, I'll I'll say this. Like, I to talk about that. I said this years ago. Either shit or get off the pot. Like, if you don't bring back the Snyderverse, like after they did the whole uh, Josh Whedon thing, either you go his direction because they wanted the whole Marvel thing, even though they kept saying I don't want the Marvel thing. 
but they brought in Josh Whedon to do all that, which is why that original Justice League was like very Marvel campy. And then you go back years later and then you do the Snyderverse. And I said, this is a mistake. Like, if you bring out that four-part thing, you're going to split everything. You're going to doom DC with it. Mm -hmm. I personally did like the four-hour Justice League thing. I thought the Flash was better told in the Zack Snyder uh, version. I thought the um, Cyborg version was better told. I thought those things made the movie. Because to be honest with you, the first Justice League movie, I fell asleep on. Because I was just like, yo, this is, like, this isn't even Marvel campy. This is just badly done, all right? But I was like, you know what? I was like, I, at the time, I was like, what the fuck do I expect from DC? Like, they're not doing anything. Only the animated series is doing well. But when I saw the four-hour, I actually sat up, like, Anthony was trying to, like, pass out during the whole thing. Anthony was like, damn, man, like, this shit is four hours. Um me, I actually enjoyed it. I actually got pissed at the end. Now, if you want to talk about an end credit thing that fucking set my soul up, was like, like, really pissed me off was fucking Martian Manhunter showing up at the end of the show. Bruce, he was there. And I was just like, so, uh, they getting their ass kicked by a, by a, by a god. And basically, if he had won, he would have destroyed the earth. What were you going to do? Just pack up and bounce again? Like yeah, you, pretty much. Yeah, like you weren't gonna, you weren't going to stop and go. You know what? This place is kind of cool. Let me, you know what? Let me lend a hand, even though maybe I'll talk to these guys and maybe I'll sub. Uh, what do you call? I'll I'll suppress their thoughts that I actually exist. But nah, you wait until that end. Yo, listen, nah, you should have stayed here. But he he was right. inspired. That's what he said at the end. He was like, if it wasn't for you, you know. He now was, I now I. Now, now he realizes after all that shit's done, he has a stake in this world. I'm like, bro, where, where the hell you been? I'm inspired. Man, still, you were here. You were with Superman this entire time, and now you realize you have a stake in this world. Like, I'm, bro. I'm inspired to hate him even more for him. Like, he has now become the least character I want to see in any, wow. any DC showing. Like, yo, you don't show up like that. Like, yo, you need to just not exist. Like, yo, I'm but, here now. Like, bro, where you been? You know, but I said that about the Snyderverse. When it comes to them axing everything with DC, DC kind of shit their bed. Like, I don't mind Ben Affleck coming back, but I'm disgusted that you're going to take out Michael Keaton because that was everybody's 1989 Batman version. And like everybody else, I was hoping that would lead into old Bruce, which would lead into Batman Beyond, yeah. which would lead into something like we could do that because it would be good. I don't mind if you put a timeline where old Bruce and Bruce from another another timeline comes in and they meet and I, and I had no problem with Ben Affleck coming in after that, but to ex Michael Keaton, I mean, he's not going to hurt for it. He's, he's really signed on to be vulture. He did an excellent job as vulture in Spider-Man. So it's like, it'd be good to see him come back. Henry Cavill, I think was kind of done with it because he's gotten so much popularity over the Witcher and for him to be invited to be Captain Marvel or Hyperion, I think he would do way better as Captain Marvel. Uh, Britain. Captain Britain, sorry. Like, um, to have him coming in as Captain Britain, uh, which didn't they have another name? Yeah, no, he was still always Captain Britain. To have him coming in there, that would be a good tie-in to the X-Men, considering his sister is Psylocke. Um, that would be that would be something really good to go into. But then DC has to realize, what are you doing to kill off half your... Like, that is a great Superman. Ben Affleck's a good Batman. Michael Keaton's an excellent Batman. And then you have Black Ezra, Adam. As Ezra Miller needs to go fucking sit somewhere. Gal Gadot is great. Um, Shazam! Yeah, it's like Shazam... It's also had, delayed. Yeah, Shazam has slowly become, like, one of my favorite DC movies, only because I didn't have any faith in uh, Levine being <laughs> Shazam. I really push for saying if you're going to have The Rock as Black Adam, you need that comedic side by having like somebody like John Cena come in and be the adult version of Shazam since they had that kind of uh, relationship and doing the banter. But he really changed my mind. He the, the entire family is hilarious. And I think it is a good mix with that. So you have Aquaman is just excellent. I, I had a discussion with Jarrell about homeboy who's playing Black Manta. <laughs> the, the DP, like doing superhero movies is clown, clown work. It's yeah, clown work. hilarious. And, and I had to stop and say, but bruh, your popularity came from 
two Black Manta. big DC, two big D. No, 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 even after that, two big DC shows because he was um Dr. Manhattan. Dr. Manhattan in the watch phenomenal and, and played an excellent role in that. So how does that clown work? I mean, that show won an Emmy mm-hmm. for for its for its series. But so dude, how how is it clown work? You claim the thing would have been your episode on Black Mirror yeah, where, you, where, you were, where, where, where you were a video <laughs> game character get your cheeks clapped by your whole <laughs> boy. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> like what, what, what do you... Yeah, that, what, that's never going to go away. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> What, how is what you're doing clown work, bro? You you had people. Yeah, you can't do Black Mirror and call superhero movies clown. Work. Like, you know, <laughs> I mean, what was the phrasing he used though? Is that what he really said? I don't think he said. For some reason, I think that was. Too- I understand it in in the sense of like I don't want to do superhero movies because you're pigeonholed, and then yeah. it's not. It well, depends I, on the movie. Yeah. Well, I I took I took it as, and I said this to Sean. You know, you know the actress that plays Professor McGarnagle in Harry Potter. You know, she's a well-renowned, like, British actor. And when they interviewed her, she was just like, well, you know, these Harry Potter movies, it's not like they're challenging from an actorial. You know? And I just took that as, it's just like, okay, it's cute, it's fun, but this, okay. isn't, Shakespeare. this isn't Shakespeare. Okay, <laughs> Nadia, I have you know? the exact quote here. It says, he said, everything should be about getting to truth, but sometimes you got to know which movie or genre you're in. Something like Aquaman, that's clown work. Aquaman is not the trial of Chicago 7. You got to get over yourself. In order to survive and to do it well, you have to play the game and then be crafty about what, when you want to surprise the audience, the director, of your, uh, the, the, the director or yourself with a little bit. Wow, I didn't expect that, to see a role like that. So um, basically, and you know, it's the same thing that Scorsese says of how, how, you know, superhero film, superhero movies are a bunch of roller coaster films. They're not to, they're a popcorn flicks. They're not really considered films. A lot of actors, not speaking from, I'm not an actor, but there are many actors who are serious character actors. They take these roles and they really feel like you know they're doing a kid show. It's clown work. It's not. It's beneath them, and you know, it's not something. It's not something of their quality of filmmaking yeah to to that point though i was gonna say i guess it depends where you are in your career exactly say like john boyega star wars shitted on him and i just basically said i'm happy he turned down marvel i'm so waiting to see breaking i want to see that denzel performance a denzel performance so i think boyega made the right choice by saying i don't want to do a marvel movie because i want to challenge myself so i I understand both sides we haven't seen leo in a comic book film yet so yeah. I mean, and, the term clown work is just a little disrespectful. Yeah, that, that's but, what I was going to yeah. say. It depends because and you can it, have amazing actors like Christian Bale yeah. in. Um, yeah, because the thing and also you can't you can't use the term clown work when you took the job. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was like, like, you still took the job. So and if I'm, anything, so just, be, you're a clown. just be like, yeah, 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 exactly. Like, just be like, hey, I'm not exactly doing Hamlet over here. But, you know, that's that, that's that's how I took it. It was just. Yeah. Poor, poor yeah. Poor but also poor. but also I want to say this from watching a lot of actors. They have to be careful with that because yeah, yeah. a lot of roles that they want to play aren't out there for them. Mm-hmm. And you dedicate your life to being an actor and you're doing this. And that's the only thing you're doing. You don't have anything else to do. You're talking about, okay, yeah, I want to do something like Denzel in Philadelphia or like something like, and even Martin Scorsese saying something like, oh, it's not good. Well, be happy because your claim to fame is the Godfather films. But, and, and you know, all these gangster films, but aren't you pigeonholed into just the whole gangster genre? Well, he didn't do uh, Godfather. Well, no. uh, um, Palu- Palusi, I forgot. I don't know how to pronounce his name. He did the God, but I'm just saying Scorsese has been pigeonholed into a lot of Goodfellas. Great, great, great gangster movies. Don't get me wrong. But on top of that, like, isn't it also about making money to get to where you got to go? You want to say yeah. Marvel, mm-hmm. Marvel is clown work, but as as Robert Downey Jr. is making <laughs> Eighty million dollars to do one contract is is clown work. Yeah, that's clown work that paid you a lot. Um, you you did um Aquaman. Well, guess what? Aqua. I think Aquaman came out before you did that episode of Black Mirror, right? So you did Black Mirror, and then you go on to do a series on HBO that was so phenomenal that that's clown work. Like you can not make- to mention Candyman. 
Yeah, it can, you can make a you can make a movie to whatever you want it to be, and I understand like you don't want to get stuck in this whole thing where you're just a superhero actor or whatever. But didn't Henry Cavill kind of like transition to that? Yeah, Witcher is a video game, but we all like The Witcher is just a phenomenal series, and he can move on to anything else he wants to do. He did Mission Impossible. Yeah. He did Sherlock Holmes on Netflix. He. Yeah. Yeah, it's a variety, and like most actors know that it's just a variety of but we, genres. You know, this one, like even Christian Bell when he did Thor, like yeah. Christian Bell's blunt. He's just like, yo, they gave me the M's and I took the role. Like it's not like he knows it's not Shakespeare. He knows it's not gonna be freaking uh Vice where he played Dick Cheney. He knows it's not gonna. No, be- and he he knocked that out the park. Even yeah. after he did Batman for like three three movies he knocked that out the park so is it that it's clown work but that clown work pays a lot of money right now so there are a lot of actors right now that is sitting in the house trying to work out their bills that'll take about 15 million dollars for a four-year contract of clown work while you're worried about doing shit like listen shakespeare is something a great movie is something i'll go sit down and watch and say oh like the what christian bale did dick cheney I actually sat home and watched that. I was like, wow, this is a, he played his ass off. This is a good movie. But on a Friday night when I'm chilling with y'all and I want to go watch something entertainment, we're going to go watch Marvel or DC film. Yeah, right? And we're going to laugh and we're going to talk shit about it later. So we're not going to talk shit about Dick Cheney. We're going we're gonna to talk about like what we liked about it, but it's not going to be the topic of anything. So let's give a little respect to the Marvel yeah. films. It kind of said it's gonna be the same thing when it's turned into a Marvel thing. <laughs> no, 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 I'm just saying Marvel and I'm gonna see DC after, but Marvel and DC, like yo, you're gonna call doing work with them clown work. Well, guess what? When anime comes out, what do you think the next thing everybody's gonna be mm-hmm. running to to jump on to do next? You know what I'm saying? Because those are gonna be the things that's gonna be paying money because this generation loves pretty things that shine. And keep them entertained for an hour and change at a time. And so. let, let me just say this before we get to the last section. As much in it, we all know me, I love those artsy, I love those storyteller films that he's talking about. Like, you know, those real film, film type of stuff that Scorsese, I love those type of films. Those films don't really bring in a hundred million dollars. Yeah. Who who's sometimes, the top? Sometimes they do. Yeah, some I said some, yeah, but now it's not guaranteed. The majority of them do not. The majority of them, like the movie Men, I love that movie. That movie was pretty good. Didn't bring in. It's one of those artsy type of films. Didn't bring in a whole bunch of money, but I like those type of films. So I mean, who's who's always reaching the billion? I think it's Marvel. I think it's DC. But the majority it's action, of the time, or it's action films. Yeah, it's it's those quote unquote clown work films, and and they bring in the money. So I guess we're both the clowns <laughs> for liking clown shit. So you know, I guess I love clowns. But but then what does that say about the person who did the clown shit? Exactly. <laughs> so I mean, True. but let, let's uh transition real uh quick to our last segment. Uh, what are you watching? If you're watching anything, you got any recommendations? I know Nadia, you just talked about breaking. Uh, I definitely want to see that. I'm actually going to see that this week. And I was, I forgot it came out. I missed the three dollar film. You know, the three dollar day. I, I, I was trying to find out what to go see, and I totally forgot about the film. Uh, what were your thoughts on breaking? I like what was breaking? That is oh. when. Go ahead. Oh, go ahead. No, no, go ahead. You tell it. Um, Breaking is actually based on a true story. Um, It was a John Boyega movie. Uh, Just came out a few days ago. Um, It's a true story. I'm like a ex-vet who basically, I don't want to like say too much, but basically like um, he holds up a bank, uh, says he has a bomb. He holds a couple hostages um, and he's like asking for his money. Um, and the reason I, I brought him up before, like, I think it reminded me of like John Q, like it brought, yeah. brought out like so much emotion. And like, he, like I said, he reminded me of Denzel. I was like, this man's going to get an Oscar one day. I've been raving about it. Like I, I thought he killed it, yeah. but, um, yeah, I ended up seeing it yesterday for cinema day because, um, I do go to the movies all the time anyway, but yesterday I, I told my dad and I went with my dad and his girlfriend and we're like, let's go to the movies. And I was like, let's see what's out. And then um, breaking was like the perfect timing. So it worked out perfect. Cause it was, it was a great movie. I loved it. Yeah. That's on my list. I saw the trailer like 
months ago. I was like, I gotta oh, see. Yeah. I, I, yeah, I, I think he's he definitely one to watch. People gotta yeah. pay attention to him. Yeah, he. Oh, he's an excellent actor. Like, and he's, he's gonna been, be in um, uh, Warrior, the woman. Uh, yeah, um, woman King. Woman King. Yes. Yeah, that's which another I, one. Which I wish would have came out this weekend because that movie looks so phenomenal but it's also another movie taking shit about female roles and whatever and that movie just looks like well done i saw some of the behind the scenes of how those women you know uh what's her name viola viola Viola. yeah is not a spring chicken and i'm not saying anything about her age but for her to go do the workout and the exercises to do most of her stunts and to do like a lot of stuff was just phenomenal so my thing is like this movie, like I, I was gonna say, like if nobody had plans, like we should all just go see that movie because I just want to support it to sit down and say, let's stop knocking these women putting on like great movies. I mean, if the movie's not good, I'd rather talk about how you know, like maybe it misstepped this, but uh, hopefully it's not one of those movies where the preview is better than the movie because yeah. it just looks like they, it looks like they put on a show. Yeah, this movie, and I hope, and I hope they, I hope it gets all, all the accolades and gets all the views it needs to. It looks, it looks great. So, I, I wish that came out this weekend. On, I think it would have killed it if it came out on three dollar movie day. I think the movie theaters. Uh-huh. What were you gonna say? Oh, nothing. You said three dollars. I'm like, it needs more money than that. <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. I agree. It needs more money than that. But <laughs> just imagine how crazy and packed everything would have yeah. been. Like if yeah. that movie would have dropped, I mean, I agree with them. Don't drop it on like yeah, three dollar <laughs> Friday, three dollar Friday, three dollar Saturday. But I I agree. And isn't isn't John Boyega still playing uh Kang? No, no, that's that. Oh, you're talking no, about the other totally guy. different guy. No, it's yeah. a totally different actor. But actually, I think he was in the movie for like a second. I think he was a cop. <laughs> uh, yeah. They, waste, exactly they wasted him at Comic Con. Like he came out to do the um the Ant Man the Ant Man trilogy panel. Mm-hmm. And then they asked him, they were like, so what can we expect from Kang? All he said was he conquered. conquering. Yeah. He <laughs> the only... it. And I was just like, y'all brought him all the way out here just to say that. <laughs> I mean, hey. he was already there. He doesn't <laughs> Got a better reception than the great one did. They booed his ass out of the building. Oh, no. They booed the rock. I was like, they, well, they basically booed the rock because they everybody was expecting Henry Cavill and to show up and they mm-hmm. didn't. So once the panel was done, they booed the rock. And I was like, you don't boo the rock. Like, I don't know what they did to Roman Reigns. Like, come on, man. <laughs> like, like, you don't it's not boo the rock. But uh, what is everyone watching? Or if you're gaming, what are you playing right now? I would just have to say this. I haven't been able to do much lately, but I have uh, PlayStation Plus. I do have to give them credit. They have been keeping their word, at least on adding games. Not much on the retro games. That's what that they were going to be doing. Uh, they need to add more PlayStation 1 games, 2 and 3. I want to see a little bit more. But what is free for PlayStation Plus, which I recommend, is Marvel Avengers. Uh, that's been getting trashed since its beginning. Um, now that it's completely, not saying bug-free, but they did fix a lot of the bugs. I'm actually almost done with it. I'm enjoying the story. I think Guardians in the Galaxy game was better. But this one is, is not bad. The way they did MODOK was brilliantly done. Um... They have this kind of Avengers disassemble type of storyline. They make Kamala Khan the protagonist. It's actually pretty solid. Gameplay is a little bit repetitive, but I recommend it. I mean, if you have PlayStation Plus, it's free. Give it a shot. Oh, well, whatever. What I've been watching, well, we all know uh, tonight, Rick and Morty returns, you know, season six, which I have been waiting for, for at, at, at the end of season five, which you know, blew my mind. I feel, the funny thing is, if they would have ended Rick and Morty at season five, it would have been, it would pissed me off, but it'd been a, it would have been a de- decent, like, last episode. But uh, Rick and Morty's back. Uh, I've been watching, um, I'm trying to think of what I, I, I watched The Samaritan on uh, Amazon Prime, which I thought was pretty decent, but I kind of guessed what the ending was going to be yeah. halfway through, like, in, like, the first 20 minutes of the movie. So, but it was still, I was still, I still thought it was a great show. Like, I got to give it to Sylvester Stallone. He played his ass off in this movie. Um, I've been watching, like, stupid shows. Like, I actually got on Netflix and was watching uh, the CW thing, the two-minute horror sentences. I actually watch oh, it. I just, I just watch it on the train ride because while I'm in the tunnel, I just need something to get me through the tunnel. So, 
that's been pretty good. There have been a bunch of Japanese horror anthologies that they've had on there that I've been watching. There's um, a couple of them that have been really crazy. Some of them, I'm actually sorry, I have to just look at Netflix to see what the hell I've been watching or what I have to go back to. But um, the Two Minute Horror Stories, um, School Tales, uh, the series from there. Uh, I watched The Cursed. And other than that, I don't think I've been... I started a new job, so I've been really saying been, life is just taking over. <laughs> yeah, I've been, I haven't been uh, watching anything. I just mostly watch this stuff on the way to work or after work. I have been dipping into a lot of YouTube series, <laughs> like with a lot of crazy stuff. But that's about it. I would recommend like um, watching some of these Japanese horror anthologies. They've been pretty good so far. Nadia, uh, I've actually been anything? watching. I've been watching a few things surprisingly because I've been um, I've been pretty busy too. Uh, season three of Star Girl started, so you know, like I've been watching that. You know, episode one started. That's up on the YouTube channel. Um, I was watching. I actually got access to Hulu recently, so I started watching Snowfall because my mom, my mom, my mom actually suggested I watch Snowfall, and then I suggested she watch Peacemaker. So her and I did a show. Um, <laughs> I did a show swap. Um, that's um, I said I'm still trying to figure that out because it's a story about four different people that all get their drugs from the same dude. <laughs> so I'm just um, I said I'm just trying to get into that because I had Hulu access. I went back and started watching Cloak and Dagger. Um, I kind of enjoyed that. Obviously, I've been watching Harley Quinn. You know, Harley Quinn up on um on HBO Max. You know, yeah. She Hulk, obviously. And um, I've actually this is a funny thing. I've been watching rap shit on HBO. On HBO, yo, on HBO Max. Yo, bro, I've been watching that, that too. Um, Issa? Yeah, yeah, I've been watching that yeah. too. I got a check in. I love. I mean, her. I'm you not. I mean, I'm not. I'm not gonna lie. Show. I'm like, I tease the show and I make fun of the show because it is a little ratchet at times. But I mean, with all that aside, I mean, it is entertaining. So you know, and it's not that long. I think it's only like eight episodes. So if you check out rap shit, it's like it isn't. It's, it's an enter, it's an entertaining show. I do have to say. Like I said, I tease it. Like I definitely do tease it because it's all like, hey y'all, and they got the long nails and everything. But if somebody was just like, hey, should I check it out? I would say yeah. You know, you just got to be prepared for what you get into. So to be that, honest, that's, you got to uh, get past the first two episodes because I started kind of weenie. Like I saw it, and I was just like, this is some bullshit. Like really? <laughs> and then I got to the middle of the second episode, and I was like, yo, this is. This is kind of getting interesting. So it kind of gets real Issa Rae mm -hmm. from the middle of the second episode on, and then it gets good. Yeah, so I wouldn't know. Uh, yeah, I would definitely recommend that. And I said, but uh, aside from that, um, Cobra Kai, I'm waiting for Cobra Kai. Was it season five? Because yeah. <laughs> I just want to, I want to see how, okay, Miguel, I yeah, I want to see how Miguel makes the transition from, you know, California to doing Blue Beetle. So I'm, <laughs> like, I'm just waiting for that whole thing. Because, you know, he was on his way to Mexico. And yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. And then, like I said, I'm still trying to get this PS5 so I can play this Gotham Knights when Gotham Knights comes out. You gonna play? Mm -hmm. I think the four of us really should play it when it comes out, though. Like, well, I mean, we, we can got Twitch. We got Twitch. <laughs> yeah, I don't have a PS5 yet. Yeah. Oh. You know, I probably have one in November. I mean, if, if they would have kept it for the PS4, I'll, I'll be game. But of course, they canceled mm. the PS4 version because, you know. Yeah, money. Welcome. <laughs> this, is like, this is like the corporate money episode of the podcast. It, it, it's just like fuck us it's like you know what we were done with the last gen people you guys you know come and get a ps5 and then then you can game when i'm like y'all i can't get a ps5 i've been trying to get a ps5 like what the hell so don't Never remind me so i've just been on this bad boy playing switch you know Something. catching up with my mario waiting for the pokemon next month oh yeah, yeah. paid, yeah, paid for that too yeah, yeah. wait for has, the pokemon game anybody? and has anybody checked out the Elvis movie? No. No. Yeah, I was a little... <laughs> yeah, I heard it was good. I heard it was good, though. Mm -hmm. it, mm, it's... To be honest with you, it's... it To me, it didn't... Like, they danced over a lot of true facts about it. Like, they talked about Elvis, like, getting a lot of his influence from um, Black Jazz and um, everything else in soul music. But the, the entire movie was based off of how, how messed up the colonel was to him. And I think they just didn't really go into so much about him. I think, I don't know who made the movie, but I just got the idea that this is a movie disparaging the colonel and everything he did and how Elvis was really screwed over. It, I, I wish they would have gone more into his relationship. They made it too it nice. Made it 
Yeah, they made it too nice about Elvis and more of like the villain of the story. And the people around was, him. was his manager and the people around him. And, you know, like, I think, you know, you should have gone into a lot of things. If you're going to make an Elvis movie, tell me about Elvis. I don't, I don't want to believe Elvis was this great, nice guy, especially like the true facts of he did take a lot of music out of the black right. community, but he also admitted to like doing like a lot of stuff out of there. They, they touched on a lot of, uh, a lot of the artists. It kind of got weird at a certain point because in between the movie, they wouldn't like, use a lot of the old music they started mixing like new age music like doja cat's version of hound dog oh, hell no. is is was in there yeah, yeah like, i heard that was like the biggest complaint people had it was like you're adding music in a genre that wasn't had nothing to do with i hate it. this like new concept of like like i i couldn't get past the first episode of resident evil but like that like they had freaking um billy eilish and i'm like what like what does that have to do with Resident Evil, right? <laughs> yeah, no, like, it was, it, yeah. it's fit. Don't get me wrong. It wasn't like, oh, my God, this didn't make any sense. Like, they did a good transition where the original singer starts singing Hound Dog and the Black woman starts singing Hound Dog, and then they bring in the beat to Doja Cat's version of it. And I was just like, okay, it fits, but no, it doesn't fit because this is 1957. Like, and it's freaking Elvis. Yeah, and I'm like, I'm like, okay, I'm like, what is this? And speaking of Billie Eilish, I just want to get one rant on that. How does this girl go from being a tomboy wearing baggy clothes all the time to somebody discovers she has breasts and now all of a sudden that's all you see her doing and all her stuff. Like she she just walked away from her image and her music and it's just like, now this is, this is her now. Now she's a sex symbol. Like I, I don't, not to say she wasn't before, but like, what the hell happened? Like, I don't get what she is now. Had she had she even made music since then? Mm -hmm. I don't really pay attention to. Has that. she made a new song? I mean, I I don't know. Nadia, do you know? Like, if she I don't, I'm like a music snob. I don't really know anything Gen Z. <laughs> My music taste doesn't <laughs> go past like 2010. Yeah, me too. I'm like, I can't tell you anything about today's era. I have no idea. I'm that old head who's like, back in my day. Yeah, yeah but I will, I will say this. For all you guys are old heads, this is one last thing I have watched. If you guys are on YouTube, subscribe to Math Hopper. He's a He was a battle rapper. He does a very good YouTube podcast where he brings on a lot of um, the rap and R&B artists that we used to listen to from the 90s. And he has them talk about stories and things that went on in the industry. Ooh. I think the Method Man episode was great. So was the Fat Joe episode. So was the, the Dees and Merrill episode where he just had um, Merrill on there was really good. Um, the episode where he had uh, Noriega on and Swiss Beat and everybody's clowning Irv Gotti. Like, I don't care what they say. Everybody been clowning Irv Gotti for his love of Ashante. And um, I forgot the guy that was um, on there who, um, I think it was, uh, who was always with Biggie. Uh, he comes on and he talks about, like, everything with Biggie, Jay-Z, and everything. Like, it's been a real eye-opener as to what went on in the hip-hop. You gotta watch that. Yeah, like, and it's just like, it's hood, but it's just, it's so well done where you like you hear stories about things that went on that you're just like yo that happened and you know like <laughs> jay-z stabbing somebody like over a girl i was like oh like oh yeah charlie baltimore yeah i was like whoa that's just just, just wild but it's it's a good series uh the fat joe series was great fat joe told his life from beginning to end and what he's done in music it was it was great so all right that's about it. Jarrell, you, Kind of your video went out. I think he stepped Left away. <laughs> he probably did, stepped we, away. did we lose him? <laughs> he probably stepped away. Uh, Nadia, any recommendations or comic books you've been reading before we wrap this up? I got to get back on my reading, honestly. Um, mm -hmm. I've been working on a lot of other things lately. Yes, but I'm um, going to D23, folks. So. Yes, I'm going to D23. Yes. I'm going to. Yes. So definitely make sure you give her a follow, follow her coverage. And uh, uh, what, are you, what are you looking forward to the most, let's just say? Um, praying Marvel, but I'm also going to the Tron panel. Wait, so there's a Tron panel? 
Yeah, there's gonna be a Tron panel on um, oh, that Sunday. Let's so I got reserved for that. Hopefully, announce part three. Hopefully, well, fingers see. crossed for that. All so, right, yeah. um, we are gonna wrap this up, Jarrell. Probably- yes, sir. Oh, you're still here. Okay. Okay. All right. We're about to wrap this up. Good, good, good thing you came back. Okay. We're about to wrap this up. Uh, yeah. Quick question. Has anybody been watching House of Dragons? Yes, of course. Yeah. Like, why Why they hating my man? Why they hating a the black man with the long white dreads, man? Like, <laughs> no. That man no. has that man has done his job. He's dope. The entire thing. Yo, we cannot hate on black Targaryens, yo. <laughs> They are really killing the game. My man was pissed, and he never lets his emotions get to him. Like, yo, you're not gonna marry my daughter, and I and Nadia, I want to give you props. That was an excellent editorial you did on misogyny, and mm-hmm. every, okay. everybody's male, like the male misogyny. Like, you you told the truth. But about it's it. women so, saying this, and they yeah. piss me off. They annoy me. I'm like, they're not glorifying rape in any way. Like, the show gave us the best female characters, like some of the best characters ever on TV. So yeah. calm down. So let's let's start with like they're not showing. I mean, at the time, it's not unheard of for a king, exactly. even in his fifties, to marry a woman sixteen years old because that is exactly what the time yep. was and what it called for. It is a period. Yeah. piece. Yeah, and in some Even places it still happens. Yes, yeah. Leo. <laughs> so, so kudos to you for giving that editorial because I think it needed to be said, and it was it was an excellent because nobody would be complaining if if the roles were reversed and the queen was marrying a sixteen year old dude, you know, going out there, they'd be like, "Yo, she's my she's next video." <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, see what triple duty. That's my new segment. Oh, yes. Okay. Yeah, I was about to ask uh, everybody to plug in what they're doing since we're wrapping this up. I'm going to pass the ball to you, Drell, of course. What's with me um, with you? What can you <laughs> plug in? You know, the usual yeah. still. Uh, no, well, like I said, right now we're gearing up for Comic-Con. Um, I'm getting everything ready for that, trying to put something together. Uh, we are still currently reviewing She-Hulk, dear God. We are reviewing um, Stargirl, and we're finishing up Harley Quinn because I think Harley Quinn's about to end. And if y'all not watching it, y'all need to get up on Harley Quinn because what they're doing with Bruce Wayne this season is ridiculously hilarious. Yeah, and they no have, spoilers. Yeah, they have found a way to flip the <laughs> like, dynamic. Yeah, yeah, like that's uh, it's pretty interesting. But yeah, go um, Red Eyes Entertainment lost me the first two episodes. Huh? I lost me the first actually the first three episodes. They almost lost me. Really? Yeah, but only because of they they leaned too much into their relationship. Yeah, the really, uh, and, the, took, the, and took away from the other like every character yeah. in that show is hilarious, and you you got to keep it going with that. All I'll say is for no spoilers because I know a lot of people still haven't watched it. Joker's oh, yeah. MVP this season. That's yes. <laughs> oh, like you mean you mean like Joker do? Yeah, Joke Joker's <laughs> Joker's MVP this season. Um. Okay, so Nadia, um, what's new? And plug, 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 plug. Yes, guys, follow me. I've got from Geek Girl on my YouTube channel. I recently interviewed Karama Horn. Uh, she is everywhere. She's amazing. Um, and she just wrote a book, Protectors of Wakanda. It's all about the Dora Milaje and Black Panther history and how these amazing warriors prepare themselves. Everything from costumes to weapons. This book is phenomenal. Please check out our interview. Um, check her out, The Blurred Girl. And then I have a new segment um, called Tea with Triple G. Right now, I'm mostly on TikTok and Instagram, but I'll be talking about like very uncomfortable topics. All right, John. Uh, right now, I'm still doing a few of my podcasts. Uh, Beer and Goods will probably be coming back. We're just thinking of a new way to uh, put it out there. Also, Chronicles, you know, we're off and on, uh, just like this podcast. <laughs> it's off and on here. And we'll then. be more consistent, people. Yeah. Life also- happens. Uh, I'm also thinking about starting another podcast due to uh, an episode on Chronicles uh, about the problematic things people say, uh, considering that they think I say everything problematic, (laughs) you know, so I want to touch on that with people like um, how we've how things have changed from our time to the way it is right now, which leads into why everything is the way it is. Everything is mostly a social media thing because even us. You know, we're giving out a podcast, we're dealing with, we're at the mercy of the social media, how people perceive us. So, you know, I want to start something new. Uh, other than that, you'll check me out here. You'll see some of my, I'm going to do a couple of reviews, especially the first episode of Rick and Morty that premieres tonight. All right. And I will wrap this up. First, I want to say thank you to everybody who's been watching UWL. 
And for those who have been <laughs> interested in submitting your wrestlers, you can use the hashtag when you upload Imagine Divisions or UWO Visions. Just letting you know, if your wrestler looks like a Jabba, we're going to treat them like that. So you better make like, them look like, good. I don't look like a Jabber, though. No, but your story purposes. <laughs> and I got my ass kicked in the back alley by some random Now they did you dirty. They did you dirty, Icon. I'm with you on that one. They did you dirty. I, and didn't, even get, love I didn't even get to the ring. And you're going to love what we do with him next week. So oh, it was no. all stories. <laughs> okay. Um. Yeah, but seriously, thank you for um, watching UWL. We appreciate me and Des work hard on it. Um, my name is Rachel's out finally. I, I has been that long since since we uh did the damn show. My name is Rachel is out. Cry Hill 3 is next year, and then my big one, which is my most personal book, The Playlist, which is about my love life, is gonna be freaking hilarious and probably get me sued. I gotta change the names. Um <laughs> yeah, that's gonna be fun. Uh that will be out hopefully next year as well. Of course, um, we're going to hit, we are going to be hitting New York Comic Con. We're all back. I got my press pass. Strong got his press pass. So we will be covering New York Comic Con this year. So stay tuned for that. Obviously, Anime NYC as well. We're going to be cutting up more conventions this year. So stay tuned Post for that. 2023. I might be cosplaying Miles Morales this year. I'm not sure. I'm still deciding. So if you see me, you won't know it's me. But if you see a Miles Morales, it could possibly be me this year. I'm just making sure it's going to be authentic and good. I'm, I do want to try cosplaying at least once and get out my system and say I did it um, to be fully complete as the geek, as they say. So, yes. So definitely like, share, subscribe, hit that notification bell if you're watching this on YouTube. Definitely hit that notification bell. A lot of you have told me that you don't you don't get the infamous, you know, it doesn't let you know when you when we post our UWL videos. Hit that notification bell. I don't know what's going on with YouTube. That's a whole different story. But as always, later days, we will catch you on the next episode. We'll be back. We're not going to be taking three months. We'll be back soon. I'm not even going to, I'm not sure when, but we will definitely be back. So later days, folks. Definitely going to have coverage for Comic-Con. So Yes. Yeah. So, yeah, we'll be back for Comic-Con coverage, definitely. And if they do something so major, like they cancel DC comic books, then we'll be <laughs> back. Why do you joke about that? <laughs> It might happen, folks. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah, the, the way he's going. The way he's cutting things, we don't know. So thank you. Much appreciated. We'll catch you on the next one later days. Peace.